What's up guys, it's Mike with Shallow Reef and coming back at you with another video. And today we're gonna be setting up the stand for the 200 gallon Innovate Marine with their new APS aluminum frame. Let's get started. Oh man, that was packaged really nicely. Good job on Innovate Marine on the packaging. And you are gonna need a knife to unbox this and to cut a bunch of stuff open because there is a lot of stuff that's saran wrapped and they all have uh, like packaging tape wrapped around it. So get a knife, it's gonna make your life way easier. So let's open this up and see what we got. So that took no time at all. Four minutes to unbox everything and take it all apart. Now, I do like how on the aluminum frames, they do have like a little piece of plastic that is going around it that you can peel off. Obviously, when you're building this stand, I wouldn't do it on a concrete floor, which is why I have a carpet thrown down. Don't build it in your garage, I would say, unless you got something soft on the surface, because, I mean, the stand looks great, but I can definitely see where you could scratch it up. So let me get to reading the directions and putting this baby together. This shouldn't take as long as I thought it would. This is, most of the pieces are put together, as you can see over here. Those giant sections are just already put together, so you just really need to put on the side pieces and then throw the top and bottom on and put the, the supports and the rails on the sides and you're good. This should be pretty easy. Let's hope. So the directions are really straightforward. Use this, tighten it up, and the directions consist of, um, I think, 12 steps? Yeah, it's a 12 step process. Ha! Insert your jokes there, but I mean, look. Super basic directions, because this should be really straightforward. Now, let's see if I'm as smart as I think I am and I can put this together. Let's find out. So this top section here says face down, and I have C2 here, C1 there, but it doesn't really give you a good direction of where the top of the, the um, APS stand should be, like what's facing the top, but I found that I've kind of inverted these. So this one here is C1 standing up right there. C1 needs to be on the bottom on one side and C2 needs to be on the top on this side. Let's redo this. Not sure why I did it this way, but I thought that these pieces here were only gonna go to the edges for some reason, but if I were to like look down a little farther, I'd have seen that they're supposed to be at the halfway point. So gotta drop them down a bit. It's always important to read the directions first. I thought I had a good visualization in my head, but apparently I didn't. So let's get this going. All right, now it's time to get a buddy because I can't possibly put this on the top and not scratch it all to heck. So time to get my wife and have her help me out. If she does, I hope she does. Let's pray, wish me luck. So I really like the design of this because it's so smart. You just have this little screwdriver you pull and it spreads this piece out and it just makes a really tight connection. Very smart design. So shout out to my wife for helping me put this together. There was definitely a two person job section of this, but it was very easy once we got it, you know, kind of squared away and it was great. Thanks, Katie. So I already see a problem in how I installed this. If I install it this way, I'll be pushing it here and the door will swing out here, which means it'll block my access to the sump unless I can push it and open it up the other way. Oh man, uh, I gotta change the top board here and the bottom one and invert it. God dang it. Ah. Well, 
Well, these directions suck. It says the APS panel logo should be facing down, which it was facing down that way. However, they did not like mention that these doors need to be oriented in a way where they're swinging out. So they should have done a better job on labeling where the APS logo was on the first one. That way you'll be able to figure it out. But now I gotta take the whole front panel off, flip it, and then flip this whole thing. Yeah, so don't do that, that was a stupid idea. So what I did was I just took off these cross sections here and those cross sections and then just flipped them. I thought I could be smart and do it, but I, it would have been easier just to do this from the get go as opposed to doing what I did. I don't know, man, I'm tired, I got a baby. I had to go and do some baby time and take care of him in between this, don't judge me too hard. But I did end up putting down this little floorboard here and then it says to put on this top section first but I don't want to do that until I square everything up. So I don't know if this is going to affect anything, but I'm going to put um, the swinging doors on next. And then I'll put the top board on last. And I will square everything up after I move it inside because I don't know. I mean, I get this is going to hold the tank and I know aluminum strong, but some of these sections, like if I wiggle them around too much and I tighten them down pretty hard with my hand, they move too much for my liking and got a little loose. So I get that most of the weight's gonna be on these cross sections here, but I might put a little bit of Loctite in on the little connectors. Let's see, like these little connectors here. I might put some Loctite on it, that way it doesn't wiggle loose and you know hurt the structural integrity. But that's probably one of the mods I'm gonna do to this. Maybe, we'll see. Get this into its final position and then put the top on. I don't really wanna screw the top down until I have it where I want it. Then I'm gonna remove all the plastic. Well, I got the stand in the house and now it's time to patch some holes on the wall and you can kind of see where some of the salt water didn't do uh, too much damage to the wall, but after four years, it kind of, you know, has kind of worn it down. So I'm gonna hit the wall with a coat of paint and maybe figure out what to do to protect the wall better. Upon moving this in the house, I kind of noticed that some of these pieces here, like specifically this spot came undone and this is definitely not vertical anymore so i'm thinking i'm going to adjust them all and then put loctite down in here so my modification is to put loctite drip it down into this section to make sure that these things hold we'll see how that works out and then since it's on the side i'm going to put the feet on and then flip it back up all right so with the directions it says to put the rubber feet at the bottom corners of the sand now I've already done that and I have four left over. So I'm guessing they gave extra ones and I put them on sliders so I can move the stand better. But I think there's just extra pieces because you wouldn't want to put them up here, which I'm about to do that step next, because it would kind of warp the board and you want it to be flush and the board's there to kind of take any imperfections. But I think that should be it. All right, I put the top piece on, clamped it down. I'm about to put the screws in. Now you have to put one in each corner to make sure that this doesn't move. I'm thinking I'm going to, and this, I don't know why this piece looks like that. I guess it came like that, but it's not a big deal. I'm going to probably do a very, very tiny pilot hole first. They show that you can do it by hand, but I wanna make sure that it goes all the way down and is flush, because if it's not flush, you're gonna crack the tank. It is a really important step right here. So let's get started. All right, super easy, and that is definitely flush so that's all i was looking for is to make sure that it's flush don't want anything raised up if you have one screw raised up you could crack this tank especially if it's 200 gallons that's a ton of weight being put down on the glass so make sure that this is flush i'm gonna go and do the rest uh, for the other three corners so 
So the stand is almost done. Just gotta take off some of the pieces here and, or the protective covering and paint this wall. Oh man, I'm not looking forward to that. But then I also didn't put the doors on. I've taken them off because I'm gonna do something special with the sump area. So that'll be safe for another video. We're gonna give you a hint and say it's gonna be a pond liner in the sump. So guys, let's do a little time skip and see where the stand is in a couple hours. So, the stand is finally complete. As you can see, it's strong enough to hold a 22 pound baby. But, yes, I am on baby duty for the morning since my wife is sleeping in. So this is the stand. I just need to pull off of that little piece there and it will be completed. All right, so one of the things that I did was I kept on the protective layer and it's still tacky. I mean, you can kind of see that right there. I would probably recommend not doing what I did and keeping the plastic on when you build it. I'd probably just rip it off. There wasn't any directions to say to keep it on or off when you're building it, but I don't know. I just did that because I didn't want it to get dinged or scratched in the move and there was no point to do that because I didn't ding or scratch it, but you know, you never know what's gonna happen until it happens. So I'm just not sure about that tackiness. So my opinions overall for the stand. I do really enjoy it and I like how it's built. It did seem a little bit flimsy with the lateral motion and that this uh, expanded PVC helped it a ton in my opinion. Um, I would have got it done earlier, but as you can see, we're painting the wall and I'm gonna have a whole video on what to do to prepare a wall for a fish tank to be up, like butted up next to it for a decade. So overall, good stand. I think it's pretty straightforward to build even though the directions kind of stink. If you had to build another one, you would do it in like half the amount of time. This took way too long for me to build because I flipped the end components over here and I thought I was smart and I screwed up on how to rearrange it. So it took me a lot longer, but overall not a bad build. I have it on standard or sliders right now because I'm planning on having the tank set here and I have about, I don't know, three-ish feet behind it to plumb it. So I'm going to put the stand on it pretty soon or put the tank on the stand pretty soon. And then hopefully I'll be able to slide it with two people. I can already slide it with myself with the sump and AT underneath, but we'll see how it goes. All right, guys, if you like what you see here and you want to see more, click to see more, and I will see you guys next time.